On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, it's time to blow the bridge off the dolly. I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So word comes in from the Unified Command Authority in Baltimore that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, along with the salvage teams, have a plan in place to use control detonations to remove the large bridge section that is hanging off the port side, the left side of the motor vessel dolly into the federal channel. We're going to take a look at this operation, talk about the salvage to date, and provide some background on what to expect when they blow the bridge off the motor vessel dolly. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. The Army Corps of Engineers came out with this where they're talking about how they're going to remove this section. As you see in the photograph there, this is off the left side, the port side of Motor Vessel Dolly. And they are saying that the safest and swiftest method to remove this bridge piece is by making precision cuts in the steel and then using small charges to detonate it so that the bridge section will actually fold off the dolly and fall into the water. And they're using industry standards to do this. Now, what you're going to see is basically a series of small little puffs off of it. It'll sound like fireworks, not going to be a big explosion. And you'll see the bridge structure just kind of fold in and collapse on itself. And the Army Corps provided an animation about that. But before we go into that, let's take a look at what's going on with dolly right now. So this is an image of Dolly from a few days ago. The section that they're going to do the control detonation is in the red there. That's off the port side of the vessel, the left side of the ship when looking forward. You're actually looking down the length of Dolly from the east toward the west. The section to the starboard side, to the right side of the vessel when looking forward, that's the section in yellow, and that section has been removed. I also want to highlight one key thing here. Notice how far down by the bow Dolly is. She's kind of lower forward than back aft. And this has to do with probably the weight of the bridge pushing on the bow into the mud. Now, when they remove this weight off Dolly, she should come back up. However, there could be damage to the hull, which involves flooding, which may require pumping out, may require some ballasting issues. Remember, there's also in a natural gas pipeline that's under the mud here. So they have to be careful about removing the vessel going across it. So all those factors are going to be at play here. Image from above over the bow of the dolly. First note, the amount of containers that have been removed, about 183 containers have been offloaded from dolly on those forward sections. Now, not all the containers have gotten off. Some of them are pinned and crushed underneath the bridge, but many of the forward containers were removed. And this helped open up the working area so that they can remove elements of the bridge, but also they don't want to damage the containers that could potentially be hurt in a bridge control detonation. Here you see the Weeks 55, five, uh, excuse me, 533 in action. This is the crane that was removing the large bridge section off the starboard side, that section in yellow I had there before. These photographs, by the way, come from uh, Chesapeake Bay Dead Rise uh, Marine Photography. So I'm going to have their website down in the show notes below and talk a little bit about them at the end of the video. If you don't follow them on Instagram, you should. Uh, just amazing photographs he's been able to put out here about the salvage. You know, Dead Rise is doing great still photography. Don't forget our buddies over at Menorcan Mullet. Captain Andy and his crew have been doing live videos, but they caught a lot of the salvage work as it was ongoing. Here you see that Weeks 533 crane in action, uh, lifting off large sections of the bridge off the starboard side. Uh, you can see those sections coming off, and those sections are loaded onto barges, and then they are sent down to Trade Point Atlantic for salvage. This photograph comes from Unified Command. It shows you the bridge section on which they're going to do the control detonations. You'll notice on this section, orange markings, numbers. This is where the charges and the cuts are going to be made to allow that bridge to collapse. So you can see a lot of the prep work being done here. The scale of the damage to the bow of Dolly is significant. 
This indicates massive structural uh, damage to the ship. The, the structural integrity of the vessel is compromised. You can see that gouge on the bow. This is just on the starboard side of the vessel. We really haven't been able to see the port side of the vessel because the bridge is still on it. You have this large concrete pillar that came from the pier they struck. So this ship is not going anywhere fast. Even when it's freed and moved from the channel, there's going to have to be significant repairs done to the ship for fear that the bow could be compromised. So this is the video released by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I will have the connection to it. They've got an audio that goes with it, but I'm going to just talk over it. So they have analyzed this structure. The problem is this structure fell in one large truss piece. And if you cut this piece, the problem is it's going to snap like a rubber band and collapse. What they need to do is make multiple cuts at the same time and then be able to lift it off. They can't do that. There's not a crane really around that can lift this off in one piece, plus it's structurally damaged. So instead, they have analyzed it, and what they're going to do is make a series of cuts on the bridge, uh, make these stress cuts, and then insert explosives into the structure. They will wrap it up and then execute a controlled detonation. And what you'll see is a series of these small little explosions, and then that will cause the bridge to fall off the dolly and into the water alongside. Then you could remove dolly while at the same time picking up the much smaller pieces from the water, do the cuts on the section that's still in the water, and open up the Federal Channel and pull Dolly to a dock in Baltimore for offloading and damage assessment. Now, I made that sound very easy. It is not. It is an extremely complicated and hazardous element. Uh, the crew of the vessel is still going to be on board. They're still on board. This is an operating vessel. There's still refrigerated containers. The machinery needs to be operating. When the explosion takes place, the ship's crew will hunker down. Uh, there's no real big damage you know, danger here of shrapnel flying, but the crew will get below. Uh, remember, these ships are being shot at on a routine basis out in the middle, in middle East, in the Red Sea by the Houthi. And we haven't seen a lot of casualties, three dead, several wounded. Uh, so this crew will be able to hunker down. They're going to have containers between them and a lot of steel. They'll be perfectly safe. Once the explosion takes place, then they're going to reassess, figure out what the right move is. Some of the debris may be up against Dolly. They may have to remove some of the bridge before they could pull Dolly out. They were hoping to get it out by May 10th. That may have been optimistic because of weather issues over the past weekend. So we may not see her moved on the 10th. However, once the bridge is destroyed off the port side, you can expect to see movement pretty quick. Lastly, I want to talk just a little bit about some of these great photographs that was done by Dead Rise. I can't tell you how much I enjoy the photography that is coming out by this. Here's the Lynn Moran, one of many tugboats that are in operation in and around the area. The uh, number of craft that are operating are, are dozens. And Dead Rise has been able to get out and just get these really great images of it. But probably the best ones are those of the crews. Mark got a chance to ride out with the Coast Guard the other day doing a crew change on one of the buoy tenders that's out there. If you want an unsung role for the Coast Guard, it's maintaining the aids to navigation and the crews on the buoy tenders who have been planting buoys to mark these new channels that are opening are really doing a great job out there. And then great images of the salvage crews that are out there. Uh, just want to again recommend if you have the opportunity, go out and uh, check uh, Dead Rise out. It's a great site. Uh, I'll have the website so you can take a look at it. They're on Instagram. Just really amazing. Uh, the Chesapeake Bay is, is one of America's really untold beautiful sites. I used to live up in Maryland. I used to get out in the bay. I used to do this. I used to go out on Chesapeake Bay log canoes and race them. So it was always a lot of fun. So I, I, I want to take that opportunity and tout Mark and especially with the Unified Commands doing too. A lot of imagery coming out on this. 
they're really progressing at a great rate. So we can expect to see a lot of excitement coming out of this site here in the next few days. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, which I think is a really important thing because we don't emphasize this enough either, is that during the salvage operation, Unified Command was able to recover the last of the six missing people. This is obviously crucial for the family members involved. Uh, closure is extremely important. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask, why was this put aside? It wasn't put aside. One of the issues is that that in a, in a recovery operation, I've been a firefighter for 25 years now, is when you're doing a recovery operation, lots of it is going hand in hand with the salvage and that operation. And don't think for a minute, just because it wasn't being talked about, that the the the, the search for this last of the six missing uh, bridge workers was was not important. I, I mean, it, it's tragic. I mean, the loss of six lives should should be f first and foremost in our thoughts that this happened. It is amazing that we only lost six people. If this had happened during the day in rush hour, we could have been talking about dozens, if not hundreds of people. So it is great for the family members that uh, we're getting a little bit of closure at this point. And hats off to the Unified Command, to uh, the, the, the U.S. Coast Guard, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, Department of Maryland, Don John, uh, uh, Resolve Marine, Scansa, Moran, uh, Weeks, uh, Chapman. I, I, I can't name all the groups that are out there. There is a lot going on here. And again, you know, I was a critic of... of the Unified Command uh, Authority. I thought that they really needed to put one person in charge, but I think behind the scenes, there is one person in charge who's running this. And my hat's off to the captain of the port, uh, Captain O'Connell, who's been running a lot of this behind the scenes. This is an amazing endeavor. The fact that we're seeing ships move and we're seeing a salvage operation of this speed and, and magnitude is is a amazing accomplishment. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the button so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Give it a thumbs up, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon, become a monthly or yearly subscriber, or more importantly, head over to Dead Rise Marine Photography and don't forget uh, Cat Mandy over at the Menorcan Mullet. Uh, they've been doing a great job in photographing and following this event and really documenting what's been happening. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.